Hello, my name is Ryan Cox. I'm the Extension Meat Specialist for the University of Minnesota. And today here at the American Cured Meats Championships, I had the opportunity to judge whole muscle jerky. Uh, this is a very broad category. There are a lot of entries typically in this category. A lot of processors make this product. Uh, it was another fantastic year, a lot of great products. Uh, some also some really great opportunities to show you some, some defects, some flaws, and, and things to think about when you're making your product. So just walking a little bit through how we judge whole muscle jerky, we understand there is a certain regionality to jerkies. Um, typically, uh, in certain parts of the, the country, we, we tend towards a more tender, probably higher moisture jerky, whereas other parts of the country, they're looking for a slightly tougher, a little bit more pull to the product, uh, and it's typically a little, a little drier. Uh, within this category, we also allow for different flavors, uh, so you have to judge each product on its own merit. First evaluating the product, we're looking for, uh, largely on the external appearance, we're looking for number one, uniformity. Um, understanding that uh, at the shop, at a processor, you can market a product that doesn't have necessarily a lot of uniformity, but in a contest, uh, we're looking for products and pieces that are very uniform, very similar to each other. And so although these are not identically perfect or machinably perfect, uh, these are pieces that are very similar in size. Uh, we've cut some of these to evaluate them. Uh, additionally, if you look here, this is a very large piece of jerky. Um, and then this one was cut for evaluation, but if you look, all of the pieces are fairly the same size, uh, and fairly uniform. Um, so that's one thing that we would look at. Differences in uniformity you can see with this product here, and there's another other, other items that we'll discuss with this. From there, you're looking for color. There will be a little bit of variety in the color of jerky as well. They can get particularly dark, and that can be a defect. This product is very dark. Okay, and that is fairly indicative of perhaps over drying or over smoking. This product does have a nice color. It's a dark brown color, but it's not black. And then there are some color issues there. In addition to that, we can certainly see some defects. So with jerky, you're looking at a very lean product. And if the product increases in fat content, then that fat can precipitate to the surface. That's something you can see with this product here. You can see that as this product was dried and cooked, that the fat has accumulated on the surface not necessarily on both sides, but typically on the side that's lower or sitting on the rack or on the screen, you're going to see the fat accumulation. The product cannot be dried completely. It may be excessively wet. Uh, this is not necessarily a very ideal uh, appearance for a jerky. When it's wet like this, jerky is considered to be a dried product and shelf stable. This product does not appear to be shelf stable because it is so wet on its surface. Also have a little bit of a, an issue with the distribution of the topical ingredient here or the spice. One other issue we can have with drying is over drying or precipitation of protein or salt to the surface. And so you can see that as whiting out. We typically call this whiting out or ghosting. Okay, and, and we can see this with over solubilization of the protein, overworking, and that protein will precipitate to the surface, very much like when we're making sausage and looking for bind. It can also be salt, but more, more often than not, it is the protein. You can also see an, an issue here with distribution of the topical ingredient. This would be the red pepper flake. Okay, so we've got a number of, of things that we could work on, certainly, with this product. As we go, we do not necessarily evaluate these products for interior uh, appearance. We don't have a cut surface because this product is typically very thin. And so this is, uh, we evaluate this for texture, uh, edibility, or eating quality, and then obviously flavor. The product should have a bite. It is a dried product. It should have some texture to it and some pull. You should be able to eventually get through the product with your teeth. Uh, when the product is too tough, typically it remains in one piece as the consumer continues to chew. So that can be uh, overly tough or rubbery. Uh, additionally, if it's over dried, there can also be a problem where the product will actually get to where it almost shatters like glass. The, the, the proteins will get very, very dry and get very mealy. Uh, so, that's, so that's something we're looking for. As for flavor, we're looking for a balanced flavor. Like we said, there are a lot of different flavor categories within this uh, jerky category. Looking for a balanced flavor, again, trying to avoid a one-dimensional flavor, something that is overly peppery, overly sweet, or can have an off flavor such as a dirty smoke flavor, which may be indicative of overuse or misuse of something like liquid smoke. So that's how we would evaluate this category.